So I just got the latest Asus Tough A15 with the Ryzen 7 4800H. And we're gonna talk about Ryzen's pursuits to take on Intel for creative professionals. So have they been able to do what they were seeking after, which was to dominate over Intel for video editing, graphic design, and photography. So some of those higher, uh, clor, clor, clor. Anyway, we're running benchmarks, tests, comparisons. Let's see what Ryzen can do. Coming at you right now. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're gonna find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. So if that sounds like you're kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. So Ryzen really came on to the laptop scene in about 2017. They started attacking the more low end to mid range budget laptops and try to really edge out Intel for some of their mobile U processors and mainly the i3, i5, and i7 mobile processors. And they did quite a job at it. Any processor that they went after, they were able to slightly overcut Intel and give better performance. But they didn't, well, until this point, they haven't gotten into the more high performance range of laptops to take on something like the i7 8750H, the i7 9750H, and now the i7 10750H and the 1087 50 or 87.5H, forgive me for the exact code on that one, but that's where they're aiming their sights now with stuff like the Ryzen 9 4900HS, the Ryzen 7 4800, which we have right here in the tough A15. And so these are things that they're doing to try and cut out Intel from the creative professional market. Now, Ryzen is setting themselves up to take over Intel for creative professionals. We see them doing it in the gaming sector, but have they done it for us? Well, we'll find out in just a minute in the benchmarks. But the way they're doing this is shrinking their nanometer process. So they have seven nanometers. They're also getting higher core counts. So you'll see Ryzen having 12 core, 24 thread or eight core, 16 thread processors, which allows them to do better multitasking. So if you're running like Premiere Pro, if you're running Photoshop, Illustrator, Google Chrome and Spotify at the same time, you can remain at a good performance level without overloading your processor. Something that Intel has not always been super good about in the past. And they're also matching the clock speeds on Intel, which means they're getting more performance out of each core, which is a good thing. Now, if you're curious about like core count and clock speed and cores versus threads, I've actually have a whole other channel talking about like the in-depth don't tech with me type of things. And you can check that out in the YouTube cards above. But for now, let's stick onto this video. Now on the benchmarks, you can see that Ryzen is winning on single core and multi-core. But the one area that they are still unable to gain traction in is Premiere Pro which for video editors like me, this is a huge deal. Due to Intel's quick sync feature, Intel still holds the crown this year for the best CPU while using Premiere Pro. In DaVinci Resolve, however, Ryzen is doing really well. It's because DaVinci Resolve doesn't just use processor power when exporting. They also use support from the GPU. So Ryzen has really taken over for almost everything but Premiere Pro, it seems like. So if you're a big avid Premiere Pro user, you might wanna stick with Intel for another year or maybe for another generation, or if you can hold off until another iteration, but that could be like 18 to 24 months before we see them either make a stronger processor or get in bed with Adobe uh, to do some quick sync like thing that Intel did with Adobe and Premiere Pro. But what about better battery life? You know, that's that's one thing that improves performance is you being able to take your computer out longer and have less power consumption. You know, they have the smaller seven nanometer chips now. And so, you know, is that gonna consume less power? Well, because of the chips in these laptops are high performance, that H classification, we're still seeing 45 watts out of these Ryzen processors. So we're still seeing the same power consumption. So it depends really on the size of the battery within the computer. It really isn't as much with the processors that are coming out from Ryzen that are taking on the Intel processors that we've all beloved for creative professional tasks like video editing, graphic design, and photography. So when it comes down to it, is Ryzen better for creative professionals yet? Well, I can say that they've definitely caught up. There's no question about that. And in a very short amount of time. However, if you're a Premiere Pro user, I'm still gonna lean you towards the i7-9750H or the latest i7-10750H. Um, these processors are really optimized for Premiere Pro with Intel's Quick Sync, And so those are gonna be a great benefit to you. Now I'm gonna recommend the i7-9750H uh, basically like last year's processor, because we're only seeing like a 10% boost in performance over the newer 10th gen i7-9750H, as in the, the one that superseded it. 
And so really save some money and go for the older processor. That's what I'm seeing a lot of people do. And personally, that's what I would do if I was in the market to buy a new laptop right now. But we're talking about Ryzen. Sorry to like switch over to Intel. If you're looking for a laptop that is comparable to like the i7-9750H, which has historically been an awesome processor for creative professionals, then the Ryzen 9 4900HS or the Ryzen 7 4800H are gonna be two fantastic processors that are both gonna be quality processors to give you the performance that you need. One's gonna have more cores than the other, so it might be a little bit better for multitasking, but not much. These processors can only reach so high of a clock speed, which gives them only so much power in your laptop. So unless you're running like multiple programs at the same time, and I mean by multiple, it's like eight to 10 programs at the same time, which people rarely do that, having those multiple cores doesn't really improve performance that much. So will I be switching from Intel to Ryzen? Well, I'm gonna be doing a custom PC build and I have yet to decide which processor I want to use in the build. So I'm gonna be doing a full PC build and walking through the entire process. How to pick your parts, what to do before you even start the build, what to do for the build, how to install each component, and then what to do after the build and different price points and budgets on what you are looking for, what you're looking to accomplish, whether it's just design or 1080p video editing or 4K or 6K or 8K. What specs do you need? What components should you buy? And then how do you put it all together? That's coming out on the channel. So I hope you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on that content coming here in early summer. I'm Benji Kaiser. I hope this has been helpful, helping you understand Ryzen versus Intel in these times and to see that Ryzen has caught up, but they have yet to take over Intel for a few things, specifically Premiere Pro. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here on the next episode.